Welcome everybody to our new accessible typing apps from APH. We are so glad to away. Thanks, Leanne, and welcome everyone. It's Friday. I'm sure everybody's looking forward to getting started with the weekend. I'm Jim Sullivan. I am the Director of Social Enterprise with the American Printing House for the Blind and extremely happy to bring to you a great webinar today that I think all of you guys will find very informative. Our agenda, we're going to do some introductions. We're going to get into you looking at Talking Typer. We're going to look at Typer Online and we're going to look at Typer OS. Joining us today from the great state of Kentucky is Joe Hodge. Joe is pictured here in this image. This is at the Consumer Electronics Show a little bit earlier in the year working with our Code Jumper solution. And if we were to create APH trading cards, what I would call this is an action shot of Joe uh, showing some consumers at the Electronics Show how Code Jumper works. He is a, a partner in crime of Leanne and I and is a software quality assurance analyst. Now he hails from the great state of Indiana. And if I am not mistaken, he is a Ball State Cardinal. So whoop whoop for any Cardinals out there. Unfortunately, Joe is a Chicago Cubs fan and being a Cleveland Indians fan, I'm still going through therapy from that loss a few years ago in the World Series. Uh, however, Joe, Joe is not. So I think you're gonna really enjoy Joe and we are grateful that he's taking time to be with us today. Before I kick it over to Joe, I do want to remind you of just a few APH solutions that are out there. On the Braille Literacy Continuum, don't forget about our Braille Buzz. The Braille Trail Reader and coming shortly will be our Chameleon 20. You can get a hold of us at sales at APH.org and the telephone number of 800-223 1839 is there. And just a reminder that uh, these and other products are available not only with quota, but also with non quota funds. Uh, also want to do a plug for the resources. The Excel Academy is still coming to you daily for the, for the month of May. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity for your students to engage daily in different activities and events. And then of course we keep this webinar series going. Next week we'll be doing a session on adaptive PE and our friends from Humanware will join us to do a session on Matt Connect. And then finally, I want to remind you all of our Connect Center, which is open for business, as is all of really APH. Don't forget about Family Connect, Career Connect, and Vision Aware. Uh, the telephone number that you can get a hold of them at is 800-232-5463 and Connect Center at APH.org. In a previous life, I worked for the Cleveland Site Center as an employment specialist, and I used the Career Connect solution, which was a part of AFB at that time, with the students that I was working with in a summer program to do informational interviews. So if you're looking for things to do with your kids now, I would encourage you to visit the website and reach out to our staff to learn more about Career Connect to do some projects with some of your adolescents and even your, your young students to learn more about careers. It's a great time to be able to do that. So, um, Typer or Talking Typer. I think many of you, if not all of you, are familiar with Talking Typer as a computer keyboard and typing training software that speaks and displays lessons on the screen. It includes drills, practices, and typing games and adjust to the student's level of skill and sight impairment. Their solution is available for you uh, for digital download as well as CD-ROM. The cost is $79 for the download and the CD-ROM is $89 and there are options to purchase multiple licenses for that. So what Joe's going to do now is introduce you or take you through Talking Typer. And then when he wraps up, I'm gonna take you through the process of, of downloading that. So Joe, I'm gonna stop sharing now and kick it over to you. And once again, thank you for joining us and uh, helping us with this today. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Joseph Hodge. I've been at APH for about uh, three years, as Jim said, and uh, it's my honor to walk you guys through Typer. Uh, I actually grew up in and went to public school and I learned to type on an Apple IIe so I was a little bit before Talking Typer came around but um, I, I, I love using it and I'm going to show you guys a few things since the kiddos are stuck at home that might help them out. Um, 
So let's go ahead and start my screen share here. And because you are using uh, a voice over Skype software system, edit, I am edit, going to turn edit. off right now. Name title is colon. Sorry about the loud music there. Sorry. <laughs> um, Sully, can, are we good on the screen now? Just want to make sure that we're sharing properly. You're good on the screen, and I have turned off the chat so that people have the opportunity to hear how Talking Typer is reacting to, oh. I assume, JAWS, correct? Yes. Actually, okay. so I want to talk about that real quick. So I was Go for it. Uh, this morning, there is a setting in here. So I am actually currently running JAWS. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and okay. new control control menu. my... Menu, go. context menu, go menu, go, go. navigate, press left, right arrow, period, see, context menu, tools menu, navigate, press left, down there, size of the menu, menu, context, no topic, menu, tools, navigate, press left, right, screen screen tools, that's a little confusing, okay, groups, <laughs> preferences, all right, so in preferences, now, uh, navigate, right arrow, uh, we have a login screen, because I actually set up myself as an administrator, so as a teacher, we're a parent, I heard we have a parent out there, uh, you can actually make yourself an administrator and control accounts on the Talking Typer app for Windows, so basically to start this off, this is a typing tutor, that will assist a child in learning the keyboard and learning how to type fast. Uh, so you can set things such as, there are actually different modes in here. There's drills, there's practice, uh, there's keyboard exploration, and there's even a game called Hurry Scurry. So I'm gonna start, type start, in my start. admin password, which is just 222. Okay. Uh, this is all stored on the computer. Button. There's nothing that's going Default. online or anything like that. So there's no like chance of data going anywhere. Um, Edit, okay. So here we go. Password so for location of data. Name for um, teacher, general. We have different settings that you can control. Student uh, program to default to default 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 Joe, you're yes. gonna have to wait until Jaws finishes speaking before you can speak because we can't hear off? you over okay. here. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so basically, as I'm tabbing through here, you're gonna hear it reading the options. But what I wanted to show you is that you can actually set speech to off. So by default, what's nice is if you don't have a screen reader bot, so Jaws costs a lot of money, you may not have that at home or a student may not have that at home, they may have it only at the school. Uh, you can actually run this program without any JAWS input at all, which is great. So uh, in this option here, you can turn speech to none. So if you have JAWS, you can, uh, you can allow JAWS to keep talking only, or you can go to, you can actually change voices to like Microsoft uh, different speeches, or if you've purchased engines along the way, you can use those. I'm gonna hit escape out of here because I'm, I'm actually just gonna turn off JAWS. Escape edit. Here is a lesson for real media user. Okay. Jaws, there we go. So now, what we're going to get is we're going to get the Microsoft voice. And I'm going to go do what's called keyboard exploration. So if I'm a student and I don't know anything about a keyboard, uh, you can fire this up and you can hit uh, Alt-K. I'm oh, sorry, Control-K. Keyboard exploration colon press escape twice quickly to exit dot. So it says to press escape twice to exit. But if I press any key on my keyboard, except the function key. A lot of uh, laptops have function keys. It will not speak that. But if I hit A, S, D, F. You're getting a very nice human narration voice. And even down here, like on control. Control, Windows, Alt, Space. You're actually getting those read to you as well. Uh, so basically a student uh, can, you can actually launch this up, press control K, they're in the keyboard exploration. And then you can say, okay, just type, hit buttons. Tell me what they do. F8 and it will actually announce the button that you push. So that's really useful to learn the keyboard. I actually still use this today uh, when I get a new computer because sometimes the, the control and the alt, the windows, they can be placed differently. Uh, it's, it's, all keyboards are just a tad bit differently. There's nothing, uh, there's no real standard, um, to, you know, escape. as far as uh, the function keys go. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna hit escape twice. Es escape. Edit. Title and, again, colon. and again, Joe, that was control K for keyboard exploration, correct? That's correct. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to actually open a lesson and just kind of do that so you guys can understand uh, how these lessons are set up. Now, when I, I'm going to go ahead and new control open, here. save, open, app, login, password, edit. And since I'm an administrator, I edit. it's got me set up to do um, 100 home here. keys for the left hand. So, okay. So we have, it's, it's going to say a number. So when you're creating, you can actually create lessons. I'm going to demonstrate that later on iOS. I'm just trying to consolidate and do different things on different operating systems. iOS, we have an app for iOS that's very similar to this Windows app I'm showing you now. 
Uh, so I will, I will go through creating a lesson there. Uh, but however, here we have lessons already created for us. So we have home row keys for the left hand. That's where I'm currently on. If I hit down. 110, home keys for the right hand. So it goes to 110. 110, home keys for the right hand. I hit down again. 120, new keys are G and H. So let's just go ahead and do 120, one 120, 110. go back up and do the home row keys for the right hand. Edit. Here is a lesson. Title colon. Home keys for the right hand. Instructions colon. Beginning with your index finger comma place the fingers of your right hand on J comma K comma L comma and semicolon dot. Use your right thumb to strike the space bar after each word or each set of letters dot. So we got the instructions. So I'm going to J K L semicolon space. Sorry. Uh, so what, what I did there is I pressed enter to, to go ahead and start the lesson. So now we heard the narration speak. It's a JKL semicolon. But let's just say I missed that because I was not paying attention. I can hit the tab key. J K L semicolon space. So now let's just say I don't know where J is. I, I didn't pay attention to the lessons. If I press F. J K L semicolon you heard, space. You heard the buzz. That means I'm wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it right. J K L semicolon. J K L semicolon space. So now it brings up the next drill, which is actually the same repeating one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. J K L sem. J K J K L sem. J K L semicolon. J K L sem. J K L J K L sem. J K J K L sem. J K L J K L sem. Semicolon L K J space. So now we were now we got to a different lesson. So now if I start typing, because there are like you might ask, okay, well this is nice, but what about when you get into bigger phrases? How does that work? So if I do like semicolon, semicolon. And let's just say I forget what the next word is. I can again press tab. L K J space, and that goes and gets us to uh, that tells me what I have to do left. I can also L K J just space press any other key here, and that lets me do that. So it's really neat to be able to have access and learn how to type. Let's go look at a harder lesson. L K so results escape. for Joseph Colon. So one thing about this is, as a teacher, uh, you can create student students. I'm going to actually go look at my. I've actually created a few students myself just messing around this morning. Drills control dictations con groups students. So I'm gonna login press enter there. Pa okay. Pa cancel. Okay. Cancel. Password. Edit. Two Joe. There we go. So one Joseph. We have here. So when you first launch Typer, it calls your uh, your the main account, quote unquote, whatever your computer name is. So if you're in a school system, it could just be a series of numbers. It may be like you know Homeroom 102 or something like that. Uh, whatever your computer's name is is going to be the first student in this list, but you can add students to Joe. So I have Joe, which is just actually the one I use as the administrator, but I'm going to go ahead and click add here. Add, edit student information, name colon, so, edit. So add. Uh, my partner in crime, I'm going to name the student Jim and I'm going to press tab. Password colon. And I'm going to make edit. this password one, one, one. Level colon. And you can set Edit. you can set different customizations here. So you, if Jim was advanced, I could actually I could put him as more of an, of an advanced level. I'm not going to worry about that. Speed colon. Same Edit. with speed, you can actually Read set only. Like, if you have prior information on how many words per minute he types, uh, you can put that information into these dialogues. Accuracy colon. Last lesson colon. We're just going to arrow over. Add. Remove. Insert. Edit. Print. Okay. To okay. Three Jim. So now I have Jim list item here. So now two Joe. Three Jim. If I click on him. List item. Add. Uh, I can three actually Jim. edit. Beginning with your title colon. I'm now looking at doing lessons as Jim, uh, and then as the teacher, I can go in and look at how their results did, and I'll show that a little bit later on iOS. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to kick it over to Leanne for a poll question. Okay, so you had the opportunity to learn a little bit about Talking Typer. I'm curious, how many of you know when Talking Typer was released? Oh, uh, Joe, you're going to need to mute. Sorry, sorry about that, yeah. That's okay. Uh, so, do you think Talking Typer, the legacy Talking Typer, was released in 1992? 
1996, 1998, or 2000? I can tell you it's been around quite a while if I'm giving you those dates. So is it 92, 96, 98, or 2000? Okay, a majority of you have been able to get that in. Oh, I'm still seeing them come in though. I'll wait a second longer. Okay, it stopped moving. I'll end the poll. So a majority of you think it was 1992, 36%. 30% said 1996, 26% said 1998, and 8% of you said 2000. Joe, what's the answer? The answer is 1998. So 26% of you, you hoo you did it right. Good job. Uh, do we have a moment to open the chat or are you needing to use? Yeah, go, go ahead and open the chat for a second. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll just see if there's any questions coming in. So I'm going to, I have now opened the chat. Is there any questions about what was just demonstrated that we can answer for you? And as you guys send in those questions, I will go ahead and just talk a little bit about where you can get uh, the, the talking, talking typer tool. So you can go to tech.aph.org. This is a screenshot of, of the APH uh, tech homepage. You'll encounter a number of links on that page and you'll be able to make your way down to the talking typer link. Specifically, what you'll want to do is download the solution for your Windows computer, in this case, which is what Joe is doing. Once you've downloaded that to your Windows computer, you will hit the talking typer homepage where you will at the top of the talking typer talking typer homepage be able to hit the download button where it will download the file where you'll be able to install the solution. Now to take that a little bit further for the process on how to go about doing that in the table of contents on the talking typer homepage you'll see a link for installation instructions. You can click on that link and it will walk you through or provide you with some instructions on how to go about installing talking typer. So I'll kick it back over to you, Leanne, for any questions that have there come There were in. a few questions. Uh, is how, can you adjust this, the size of the font uh, so a low vision uh, student could be able to see it? You can. So there is a font option in, in the typer op, uh, window. You can also use the native uh, screen magnification tool that you're using. So if you're using something like uh, Windows Zoom or uh, Fusion or some, something along those lines, you can go in there and tweak different settings, but there are, there is one font setting. Uh, I'm actually totally blind, so I don't exactly know how it changes the screen myself because I don't, I don't use it. I can't see it. Uh, but I do know that there is one font option in there that you can make it darker, lighter. Uh, so that, that might help in certain situations. Can you hit tab without penalty? You can. So when you're doing a repeat, uh, it, the tab does not count against you. Okay. Uh, is it available on quota? It is. Okay. And there's another question. Is there a demonstration or a demo of the product that you could test it out? Yeah. So uh, when you download the app from the website Sully just mentioned, uh, you actually get a free you can, you can do it, you can do like free lessons. Now, it doesn't let you add any students or do any of the sort of advanced features, like if you wanna become an administrator, but you can actually do like the first few lessons. Um, I, I don't exactly remember where it caps you off. Uh, it doesn't save any of your data, um, but you can kind of try it out for yourself and see if it's something that you'd like to uh, purchase. Does it work with NVDA? It does. Okay. Do you know if it can be used with Chrome or is it just Windows based? Uh, so it's just, this one is just Windows based. And this is the type, I, I'm calling it typing, talking typer legacy. So this is the, it only runs on Windows. We're going to get to uh, more exciting uh, cross platforms in a second. And I don't know, did you answer how to change the voice? Uh, so if you, I did not answer that, but in the preferences where I was, uh, as far as where I was talking about where you can turn speech off to zero or to none, uh, there's a setting in there where you can actually change the voice. So you can choose Microsoft David or any other uh, engines that you have on your computer. Okay. And I am going to pause the chat for right now and let you get going again. I'm going to hit stop share, Joe. So now it's back over to you. 
All right. So as I was talking, meeting controls window. Just, there we go. Sorry, uh, NVDA. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna stop NVDA for a second. So as <laughs> uh, you guys can probably just see my Zoom window here, uh, but in a second I'm gonna go to the website and show what we've been working on. So we're kind of modernizing talking typer. So we're taking that Windows idea, but we're putting it in the browser. So uh, I'm actually excited to announce that you guys can all test this out and we'll provide a link here uh, that we can share with you guys. Uh, so you guys can actually do this. It's free and you can uh, do it on the web. Now there, there are some, um, there are a few drawbacks. So like the, all the administration stuff I mentioned is not there. So basically right now you can just do the lessons. But you know, for students like learning how to type, that's pretty exciting. We are gonna be keep adding functionality. So the human, one of the, the biggest features we're gonna add soon, that human narration that was playing, uh, you're gonna actually have that on the typing app on the web soon. Uh, it's not there on the version I'm gonna show you. So you let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm gonna open up Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge. Loading, loading complete. So now we're at the home screen. Click button lessons. And I'm using NVDA, but this works with JAWS, uh, and it will work with Narrator even. Uh, there are a few hiccups that we're addressing with the Narrator uh, screener in particular, uh, but this also works platform across uh, platform. So the, the gentleman that asked, or the, the person that asked uh, if it works on Chrome, this actually will work on Chrome on Android and Chrome on Windows and Chrome on uh, the Chromebook. So Visited link go. button lessons. Loading page. I'm going to do a lesson here. Home keys for the left hand button. And I'm going to do home row keys for the left hand. Uh, actually, I'm going to do the right home hand. keys for the right hand button. Show something here. So uh, a, a, if you don't know anything about screen readers going into this, there are what's called uh, verbosity levels and there's punctuation levels. So right now, uh, I have my punctuation set at none, I believe. Symbol level some. Uh, so if you hit with NVDA, I'm on a laptop. So I can hit insert and press P. Symbol level most. Symbol level all. Symbol level none. I'm going to set it to none because I want to show you what's going to happen. Home, key, home keys for the right hand. So I'm going to go. Home, home keys, keys for the right hand, hand dialog application. Start lesson beginning with your index finger. Place the fingers of your right hand on J, K, L, and semicolon. Use your right thumb to strike the space bar after each word for each set of letters button. So we get the same kind of instructions with NVDA's voice that we got in the talking typer for Windows legacy app earlier. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Clickable recent results list with six items heading level to recent results. J, K, L. JKL. There we go. So now I'm hitting tab and it's saying JKL. JKL. But I can't actually see it on the screen, but I know there's a semicolon. It's not being said because my punctuation level isn't set correctly. So if I'd hit insert P. Symbol level, some symbol, symbol level all. Now and I hit tab. JKL semi. You hear JKL semi. Uh, and that's how the way NVDA pronounces semicolon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. JKL semi. JKL semi. So now I'm going to hit J. J. And then let's just say I don't remember what it was. I'm going to hit A. A K L semi. K L. semi. Semi. There we go. Space. Semi L K J. Uh, you heard a little buzz there. NVDA sometimes likes to uh, give you that buzz because it's a misspelling. Uh, but that's that's an NVDA semi -LKJ. that you can actually adjust. I'm going to go ahead and since you guys have kind of seen this, I'm going to show you actually like a phrase lesson because you guys are probably bored of JKL semicolon. <laughs> so lesson. if you hit escape twice, that's going to take you out of that dialogue. Home keys for the right. And you can tab the down through here. And you can all of these lessons that I'm tabbing through. The bracket and phrases. Phrases button. So we're going to go to phrases. Phrases dialogue. Application. Stop lesson. Dash type. These simple phrases to sharpen your typing skills. Dot button. Out of list button, phone keys for the left hand application. Yours truly edit. Type to start the lesson. Dot, dot, dot. So got yours truly. Y Y U R S space truly. O Y U R S Y O U R S space T R U L E Y Y Y space space square meal. S Q U A R E space E L space pardon me. P A R D O N space me. D O N space E space good evening. D O O D space evening. D. So as you can tell, as if I'm halfway through a word it will either spell it out if, it, if I haven't typed anything yet, or it'll actually say the letters if I type. So I, I type good. Evening. So if I, it's going to repeat since I haven't said anything or typed anything for a minute. Uh, it will actually repeat what I have to do because it's like, hey, you've, you've got some things to finish here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit space. space. But if I hit tab now, you're going to hear it say evening. E -E nope, it's actually going to make a liar of me. It's going to spell it out. <laughs> e -E 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 okay, so now. V -N -N -G. V -N -E -N -E -N -E until tomorrow. U N T I L space D O M O R O W 
So as I type, it actually, uh, just like the, the legacy version, it's keeping up to date and keeping me, le like letting me know how I'm doing as I'm, as I'm typing. I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off so you guys can see how results work. Um, the cutting edge. I'm on a, since we're working at home, I have a uh, keyboard that's on a table. It's, it's not my normal uh, setting. <laughs> As we all uh, change, make changes here. Button phone keys for the left hand application. Next lesson dash twenty nine words, comma, eighteen point one three words per minute, comma, twelve hours, comma, ninety two percent accuracy button. So that's giving me my accuracy and uh, how I did, uh, which is really neat. So you can now go on to the next lesson. Button lesson list, heading level two, phrases, go back to the lesson list and do more. Lesson list button, application, next lesson dash button lesson list. So that's kind of a, a quick demo of Typer online. Uh, it's this is kind of what you can get, but what's really, I think, special about it is that it's cross-platform and is able to uh, be, you know, you're, you're able to use it across multiple systems and uh, blind and visually impaired children and adults can use this uh, for free. So, uh, so definitely check it out. Meeting control lessons, dash meeting control row one color, meeting gym, I believe. Mute comment, top share button, Taste. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll, we'll do a little recap. I'm gonna share my screen just briefly and then we're going to send it over to to Leanne and, and by, by the way Joe um, I just want to say show off when it comes to typing at that speed <laughs> holy smokes all right so just a recap so right so typer online is, is a crop cross-platform web application right uses universal design concepts and standard web technologies right so it's it's there to assist with uh, teaching QWERTY typing skills, right? So you can utilize it with Microsoft Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, right? So those are those four browsers. And uh, it's free, right? F-R-E-E, -E, free. You can type that real fast, Joe, huh? <laughs> okay. And then um, we're going to send out this PowerPoint for you all. If you want to beta this, uh, the web address where you can beta this is here. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this maybe uh, actually I'll copy it when when I transfer this over to Leanne and we'll drop this in the chat so that you guys can can access this so I was suggesting maybe that we do a poll question on whether or not you could hear Joe's screen reader r r moving at the rate that it was but we won't do that we'll do a different one so Leanne once you do that and then Joe I'm gonna stop sharing and we'll um, and then when Leanne finishes up you can pick up sharing and we'll move into iOS and then I'll kind of go through some of the details on the iOS after you show that. Does that work for you guys? That works good. So that I works. have a question for you all. We know we're talking about touch typing. We know that students have access to a keyboard at a much earlier age, but touch typing is unique. That's being able to control information uh, and, and really not pay attention to what the keys are. So what age do you start introducing? This is your opinion. What age do you introduce touch typing? Is it between pre-K and first grade? Is it between second and third grade? Is it fifth grade and older? In your opinion, what age do you introduce touch typing? And no, actually, I Joseph, as this is coming in, I actually do want to do a quick overview of what you're going to be doing with Typer iOS because I want to describe the device that you're going to be using with Typer for iOS to the group. Okay, so once this is done, I'll share and then we'll send it over to you. Okay. Perfect. Okay, we have a good chunk of you in there. Let's see what you said. So 35% said pre-K to first grade, you're starting to talk about touch typing. A majority of you, 58% said between second and fourth grade, 7% uh, uh, fifth grade or older. 
I will say that there are many state standards now that include uh, typing or keyboarding as part of their standards. So it could be driving some of your decisions. But again, this was your opinion. So maybe it wasn't driving your decision. Maybe you're doing it earlier than when your state required it. So I will stop sharing and I'll turn it over to you, Jim. Yeah, and Joe, I guess I'll ask you the question because this was raised. Uh, what were your experiences with learning to, to type as you were growing up? Yeah, so I actually, so as I mentioned, I went to public school uh, and I learned the Perkins Braille keyboard first. So uh, I actually had a Braille and speak in the kindergarten. Uh, my parents used to say I was probably the only person that had a $1,500 item in their backpack. Uh, and uh, so I would take that to school and in the fourth grade, we actually learned how to type on a keyboard. Uh, now I had previously, I mentioned typing on an Apple IIe. Uh, there was one game that was accessible that my teachers let me play where you sort of learned the QWERTY uh, keyboard. There was a time bomb that ticked down and if you didn't hit the key uh, in time, you would blow up. Great game for a kindergartner. Uh, <laughs> they actually let me play that. And that's actually how I started kind of getting introduced to the QWERTY keyboard, but I wasn't comfortable with it until starting to learn the home row keys, kind of like what Typer was teaching us there uh, until the fourth grade. And that's, that's kind of, I learned alongside then everybody else on at the same time, we, we had a typing class that we took in school. So uh, that, that's, that was my experience. Uh, so I think it's important now that the Perkins Braille keyboard, I was very proficient with at that point, you know, because I'd used it for, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and, and I was really fast. But it's as, as I've gotten older, it's interesting. My, I've actually turned more to the QWERTY because of jobs. Um, I like the Perkins keyboard still. It's my preferred way of typing and my preferred way of doing things. However, uh, using a Perkins keyboard on Windows or a Mac or pretty much anything outside of the Braille operating systems, uh, it's a bit cumbersome. Uh, iOS has done a good job with shortcuts, but uh, it's just my opinion that to be a fast typer and to, to, to be productive, uh, the QWERTY keyboard is super important, which leads us kind of to our next product actually. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about next is Typer for iOS, right? This is a, an app that can be uh, purchased for $4.99. It is available with quota funds and features 35 built-in lessons as well as the Hurry Scurry game, right? So so it is really built on the, the Talking Typer platform. Now, what we wanted to mention is, is that as Joe begins to demonstrate this application momentarily, he's actually using the Mantis Q40 in order to be able to do that. Some of you may or may not be familiar with the Mantis Q40. So this is a product that we will be launching shortly and that we are taking pre-orders on at this time. We've talked about it at uh, ATIA as well as CSUN and have featured it recently in a webinar that we did with Greg Stilson and with Peter Tusik. And you'll be hearing more about this product in the coming weeks and months. Again, it is a 40 cell braille display with a QWERTY keyboard. So it'll act as a braille terminal with an iOS device, such as what Joe is about to do, along with Mac and PCs. In addition to that, it has apps for reading, writing, and calculating. And these are, are just basic apps that we found that students really need when they're in the classroom. The price of this will be $19.95 with quota funds and for quota customers and $24.95 for non-quota customers. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and send it back over to Joe. All right, so I'm gonna uh, share my screen here. It's gonna take me one second because I have to do an extra step than normal. Um, there we go. On my iPad now. Control center, timer. New screen mirroring. There we go. All right. This is exciting because this one Braille actually works on, which is really, really neat because the other two, uh, the Typer Online, we are working for Braille um, and it's going to hopefully get there. Uh, we're just not there yet. So when you're saying Braille, are you saying either refreshable Braille display or are you saying six key entry? Uh, refreshable Braille display. Sorry. Thank you. I should have made that. that. There we go. Okay. So now. 
Can you guys see my iPad screen now? We can see your iPad screen very well at this moment in time, Joe. Yep. Now I'm going to turn off voiceover because for some reason, sometimes voiceover doesn't come through at first. Um, and hopefully we will get voiceover now. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Home <laughs> button to the right. All right. So now on my Braille display, my refreshable Braille display here, I'm actually Log able on. to read button. what voiceover is saying. So that's that's actually really cool. So as I get to a lesson here, Current let's user, go ahead and, Joe. and do one. Uh, Double tap to show. And I'm also going to play hurry scurry because uh, that's something I, I was going to do on Windows and then. Lessons and drills. So let's Button. Go ahead and Joe. A lesson here real fast. Default less Custom lessons. Default lessons. Button. So as you can see here, we have default lessons and we have custom lessons. So I mentioned that earlier. We'll actually we're going to actually create a lesson. So if you're a student, let's say you have a student that is very not not doing well with punctuation. So maybe they're they're the reach is hard for them. You can actually de design your own lesson that has you know uh, exclamation mark, uh, number sign, period. And you can set it in any order that you want, which is really neat. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a default lesson here real Beginner. fast. Beginner, home keys for the left hand. Beginning with your little finger, place the fingers of your left hand on A, S, D, and F. Use your right thumb to press the space bar after each word or set of letters. Tech, beginning with your start, okay, start. start, type the following Stop. word, but mm. followed by a space. A, A, sad. S so A D one thing space. To, sorry, one thing to mention there. I'll let the speech finish. Is it said A A? Uh, there's a <laughs> there's an issue that got introduced recently with uh, text to speech on the iOS, where it's uh, thinking that there are basically it's interpreting A as a word, so it's saying it twice. So we have to. That's something that we're hopefully going to be fixing soon. Just just to let you guys know what, what that was doing there. If you saw it on the screen. Yes. A. Okay. Fad. F. So A. Much like D the other space. lessons, uh, as I type, it's actually uh, it, it, it's doing drills here. Add. A. D. D. Space. And the same thing happens here if I hit tab. A. A. D. D. A. A. Space. The tab on this one works a little differently, so it only tells you the first thing. So if you miss that, uh, it doesn't actually announce uh, what you need to. It doesn't like announce actually the rest of the the word. Um, Sad. S A D space. Now, what you S can do is if you just don't type, it will uh, it will uh, pick pick up. The other thing is with iOS here we have a little lag keyboard cause split because we're, we're doing um, we're actually going through AirPlay. Um, Quit button. But, S. So you can't stop uh, hear everything button. here. S. So let's go ahead and we're going to stop this. Quit button. Stop. Go Quit to, uh, button. We're gonna Home go keys for the scurry. left hand. Begin Lear kind of learning learning game. modes. Back learning. Before Default you get to that lesson. game, can I ask you a question? Sure. When you were seeing or hearing the word SAD or SAD on the screen, was SAD also displayed on your refreshable bla Braille display it was. on the Mantis? Okay. Yes. Yes, it was. And that is really nice. So as you, so what I was doing there since tab was not working and it, it, I think it was working earlier. So it may just be an airplay issue, but I'll have to check that. <laughs> uh, it's got me concerned because I, I test this. That's what I do. And uh, I was like, wait, wait, I didn't see that earlier. So anyway, uh, as I was typing though, I could actually see what was uh, on the Braille display, what I had to type. So it said, as it said, sad, it said SAD on the Braille display. As it said, you know, A it was actually say A on the Braille display, which is which is really uh, remarkable and and what makes this app pretty unique uh, in that regard because it actually works with Braille uh, very well. You can also read those that, that instructions that that it read. You could actually read that. So if you're like deaf blind, you could actually play this very well because you you have access to read everything that you would need to type. Thank you. Um, Learning right. modes heading. So we're gonna talking typer. Back button. Go to the talking. main screen here. Login. All right. But talking. So. Log current lessons and keyboard X games. Button. Hurry scurry. All right. Button. Hurry scurry. Hurry scurry. But start. This is button. a fun game. Adjust uh, so the ball bouncing speed. You can adjust. Forty-four percent. All right, there we go. You can adjust the ball speed here. So basically, how quickly you have to type something. Select the number of words below. Selected. Ten. Button. So this is going to be One how many three. words you you will actually be doing in the game. 20 uh, button I'm just keep it on 10 for now. adjust the and ball we'll button start button alert if your device is in silent mode 
you may not be able to hear the ball bounce. Also, remember to turn up volume if you desire. Okay, button. Yo, why? Stop game. Oh. Am. And again, uh. I can actually see the word on the Braille display right now. Uh. So as you can hear it as well. And we're getting cut off on the airplay here. Um, yeah, it's going off for sure. But, so what's that? But, Stop game. Q. Stop game. Button. Game over. Alert. 80 points. Quit. Button. Let me see something on my iOS device here. Work games. Um, Characters. Vertical navig. Containers. Audio ducking. No, there's not. Okay. I was wondering if there was a, sometimes there's an audio destination setting for airplay that you can uh, stop that, but it is definitely game. cutting off some, some of the sounds I couldn't. So I have another play. question for you. That <laughs> sure, displayed a few contracted words. Is it displaying by letter or contracted Braille? So that actually is handled within iOS. So you can actually choose how you want the Braille display, what, what you want on the Braille display. So I have mine set right now to uncontracted just because I'm not doing anything uh, hard. Uh, but you can, you can actually choose contracted, uh, eight dot computer Braille or uh, uncontracted. And then you can also choose the Braille table you want as well. Thank you. Games. All right, so let's go Heading. ahead and uh, talking look typer. at some of the Talk. administration Login. that you can do here. Button. So talking. Log let's just go ahead and Button. do a, a Current lesson. User. Joe. Lessons and drills. Uh, Joe. done that yet? Oh. Say Custom that one lesson. more time. Beginner. <laughs> Heading. Uh, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating a lesson. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So if you're struggling with, you have a student that's struggling with uh, doing certain punctuation or different letters, you can actually go in here and create your own lesson. Maybe you don't like the way some of the exercises are you can you can tailor it to however you want so practice for joe practice for joe. beginner heading all right so i actually created a lesson create lesson button already but we're gonna we're gonna create another one alert pa secure text field is editing enter password character mode in cancel secure can submit button speed zero speed advanced Selected skill. Okay. Type here to create or edit title for this lesson. Text so field. First thing we do is we create a title for this. Type so here to I'm create or edit title for this lesson. Text field is editing. Easy. E even. E do, uh, easy. Menu item. Capital E S S O N. Skill. So now you can choose. Selected. Beginner. The type button. of skill, so we can do beginner. Advanced. Advanced. Button. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on beginner. Speed. Zero. Text so field. So this is uh, speed, so if you Double have tap to information edit. on the student on how fast they actually type, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that at zero as well. Accuracy. Zero. Text field. Instructions. Go ahead and leave action, uh, accuracy. So these instructions here are going to be what you would actually read, so that, that uh, that information, for example, push, put your index finger on the J, put your middle finger on the K, ring finger on the L, et cetera. That is what you could actually type in this box here. Text field, drills, heading, undo, button, drills, so I'm gonna go ahead and drills, go for heading, right undo, button, yeah, actually, drill, text field. I think it's gonna make me type in something here. Double so tap, let's lead. go ahead and do just. Cap P, R, A, C, T, Cap P. Cap J. E. Okay, we're just going to do that. Drills. Heading. Okay, so now, drills. Undo. But redo. Paste. Joe. Ari Q. Joe. Pay, re undo. Drills. The... Text field. Instructions. Okay. Alert. Undo. Age. Accuracy. Zero. In tech. Uh, drills. So undo. Thing to but drills. Uh, drills. You, will, you can heading. play with the on screen keyboard, but you will want to use a Bluetooth keyboard. So we talked about the Mantis. Uh, that's a great option. Uh, if you don't have a Mantis, you can also just use a Bluetooth keyboard as well. Undo. You will want to use something where you have control over the um, the screen because uh, right now, for example, the uh, big issue is that that, I'm, that I got here is if you're just doing on screen, it's going to be a little slow going. So drill undo. Right, so now drills drills undo. Dr text field is editing insertion mm -hmm. point at start selected. Shit. Return. New line. Accuracy. Zero. In text. Drills. Heading. Drills. Undo. Button. My Bluetooth is not letting me uh, 
So let me go past this for some reason. Redo. Undo. So Undo. What would, what Redo. would be the Button. What would be the idea here, Joe? Is, is that in that edit area where you're at, they would be able to type in what they wanted the kid to be practicing? Undo. Yeah. So so right now with the with the um, for some reason here with the airplay going or something, there's it's blocking me. I actually did this earlier. You can go and set up what Selected. you want to type. Begin so skill. I will do, type, type, type this. edit lesson. I'm gonna get out Head. of this box here. Cancel student edit. But alert. Can, are you sure you cancel? Button. Text field. Title. <laughs> Save lesson. Edit I'm lesson. You out cancel either. student edit. No, I actually, you need button. to say yes. Cancel. Yes. There we go. Button. Yep. That, Text that was my, that was beginner. My okay. Heading. So now what I'm going to do is go in here pra and I'm practice do the one for that Joe. I did practice earlier. for Joe. More practice on punctuation. So I, text I put field. more practice on punctuation. That's how Double I set that up. Double tap to edit. Start. So now button. what happens is when I click Double start. Double start. Type the following stop. characters button. followed by a space, comma, period, semicolon, semicolon, space. So as, what, what I was doing here is I was pretending that maybe punctuation was difficult for me. So I went ahead and, and actually typed in these punctuation symbols uh, to say that, hey, I might need to work on these. Comma. And then. Semicolon. Semicolon. Space. Period. Semicolon. Number sign. Semicolon. So what you're exclamation see here mark. Is this is going to be. At. Space. This is going to be the last one, I believe. Exclamation I mark. I only did like a few. At sign. Space. There Alert. Your score. 11 words per minute time. 0 minutes and 13 seconds accuracy. 100% zero errors. Quit. Button. Practice. Look at that. I, I, I did Joe. well on that one. All right. So, Actions so basically, available. With, with this, you can actually have a lot of the same power that the Windows app has on an iPad or iPhone. Uh, and you can create things such as, like, like I just demonstrated lessons, you can be an administrator. Uh, the great thing too is that nothing is saved online. So you might be asking about data. All the data is saved on the particular iOS device. So where this could go wrong if you want to have like total control of being an administrator is if maybe the student has their own iPhone. Uh, but let's just say you, you guys all have maybe a iPad or something through the school system and you're sharing across maybe multiple students. This app would be really great because what you can do is you can create students uh, and then even groups um, and put the students in the groups to divide them. Uh, the student would log in they would take the lesson and you can view the results all in the administrator. So my Joe account here is an administrator. Beginner. I can actually Heading. view any student that I have created. Uh, I can view the results. So that's, that's actually really handy and uh, it's, it's nice. So uh, you have the hurry scurry game and you also have learning modes, learning, here. talking typer, back button, talking, there we go. login, button. Current lessons and drill keyboard explorer. You also have the same keyboard explorer mode that I demonstrated on Windows. So if I click on this keyboard explorer, talking typer, back button, just keyboard explorer, heading, undo, dimmed, redo. Now you can just dimmed, type button, and it will actually read you uh, Paste, the dim, letter that you're, you're typing in. Undo, uh, but D. And Joe, will those show up on that refreshable Braille display as well? So is the letter D on your refreshable Braille display? It actually is. Nice. And if I type J, A. it's there now too. And so as I type H. the letters, it's actually switching in Braille U. and putting them up. So even if someone's y. like learning Braille per se, uh, this is actually a really nice way because oh. they're, they can type a letter on the QWERTY keyboard and also feel it in Braille. So you can actually feel the, the structure. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like it fits well into our continuum of Braille literacy products and solutions when you look at things like the Braille Buzz as a tool to, to introduce the code and then you come along and provide something like this to kind of reinforce that Braille with a typing keyboard. It also work for someone who's advantageously blind who knows the QWERTY keyboard quite well but is learning Braille. There you go. Yes. So that is a little bit about talking typer on iOS. You can get it on the App Store. Uh, it does cost $4.99, um, and uh, it's, we are actually getting ready to put out a new version now. So if you, it works on anything with iOS 11 or later, just, just as a uh, 
a little bit of a warning there on, on the stats. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and Nord share my screen here. Control center. Air mute timer. And while you're doing that, can I open the chat mute back up? Yes. Button. Volume. Okay. Zujasa. Button. You might want to mute yourself. Screen mirroring. Get loud. Selected. Stop mirroring. Okay, I've opened the chat back up uh, for you to be able to answer, uh, ask any questions. Feel free to type them in the chat. Do we have any questions coming? I don't, in? I don't see any. Okay. Does All the right. program come in Spanish? Uh, it does. So what you could do on iOS is change the language to Spanish, uh, but uh, it does not necessarily. Uh, it's not written in Spanish. However, it will it will change if you change the default language. Okay. And the question: Can all of these? products be purchased through APH quota funds? And I know that answer, that is yes. Why did we use the font style used and why not uppercase letters on the keyboard on the screen? That is a good question. Um, I, we are just basically using the default iOS font. Um, what I would suggest doing is writing an email to us at tech we can actually, I maybe just put it in, put it in the, the chat. End. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put it in the chat. Okay. Uh, because what we can do is if you have feedback, there's also, if you click on help on the main screen, there's a place that you can provide feedback in the app if you purchase it, uh, where we actually get that and read it. And we, we actually do take all those to heart because, uh, I mean, we're, we're doing this app for you guys ultimately. Uh, so if there's something that you don't like, we can, we can definitely adjust. Okay, is there an option for students to free type and test their speed, typing speed? There's really not a free, t not on the iOS, um, and not really, you have to follow the lesson format. Okay. Um, Kelly is asking how we pre-order Mantis. I'm not sure if you've answered that one yet. So you can pre-order Mantis through your EOT at this particular point in time. Uh, you could reach out to the sales at aph.org email address if you wanted to, and we can help you with that information. If you're, if you're not uh, doing that with quota funds, then there is also a wait list that we have available and you can uh, access that wait list from the APH website as well. You can do a search uh, on Mantis and you should be able to find that wait list link there. So there's another question about successfully teaching Perkins keys and QWERTY keys at the same time. Is it too confusing? What is your recommendations? As a teacher of the visually impaired, I, I really would say that you need a learning media assessment to determine where your student's at and what would be the best at that point in time for communication. Uh, that really in my opinion, would be a, a team decision to figure out what would be best for the student because I think I've done both depending on my student, uh, different students, different needs. Is Talking Typer $75 for one license for one student? I think you need to think about how you're utilizing it. It, it is often, depending on how, if you're ordering through federal quota funds, a license is often identified for one student, but there's nothing restricting the teacher then putting multiple students on that. Uh, talking typer lesson. Uh, using the online version, can I create a custom lesson and send it to my student at home? Joe? So currently no, but that is actually coming for version two. It's something that we really want to do. Uh, the hardest part that we've had to face with that is doing it where, you know, with obviously putting data up on the internet uh, where it stays. So, uh, but we are working on that. And I, I assume that in version two, that's probably be out sometime in a few months. Uh, that will be on there. Jim, could you type the uh, location for the free link for the typer beta, please? And then the question is, could this app be used for an adult beginner? Yes, there's no age restriction on the app um, at all. And I think I, I thought that I dropped the, the link for the typer so you beta. You might need to do it again, depending on when they joined us. Um, I currently use the Windows version with kindergarten students. I modify by taking out phrases and sentences and add phrases when in second grade. Sentences are included when my student is in third. So that's one structure that a teacher has used. 
Um, I'm trying to think. Do you have any other recommended resources for words per minute guidelines for students? I, I would definitely suggest sending me an email if you want some more information, lgrelot at aph.org. But we can also point you to other uh, professional resources that would be able to give you some information. How much storage is required for the iOS talking typer? Uh, I'm actually looking right now. It looks like it's around 45 megabytes, so not okay. very much at all. And they are definitely able to have their students download the Typer Online free option now, correct? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually not a download. You just go on the web browser, go to the URL okay. that Jim's putting in the chat, and uh, that'll take you right there. Okay. Does any of this support one-handed keyboards? Currently, no. Uh, now, the, for example, if you have a Bluetooth keyboard or a Braille display that has one-handed mode, there's nothing that would stop you from using it in that regard. Um, so like I know there's some Bluetooth keyboards that have like a one-hand mode enabled. Uh, mm -hmm. you, could, you could use that. Now, bear in mind that it's, it's not going to, your, your words per minute, your scores are going to still uh, reflect the true uh, you know, time and val you know, value there, but you could use it in that, in that manner. Okay. Okay. Um, um, is there a price or a cost system for multiple licenses, Jim? Do, do you know that? How that would be handled? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I think we could probably do some follow-up. My guess is it's going to be $4.99 per device. So not necessarily per student, but per device. So as Joe pointed out, if you have an iPad with a uh, typer for iOS on it, you, you would, that would cost you four ninety nine, and then you could use that with say four or five students. So it's not going to cost you four ninety nine per student, but rather four ninety nine per iPad or okay. iPhone. Does that make sense? It does. It does. I didn't see any others. I was really, I kind of dug through there. Is there anything else we need to to answer? You feel free to write in the chat. As we we wrap up, because it is one o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. We do have, um, we will forward out the information on the PowerPoint to you all. And I do wanna make sure that we do a happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Uh, we've been talking a lot about superheroes these days, right? Folks that are out that are taking care of us uh, during these times in places like grocery stores and pharmacies and hospitals. But there's that other group of superheroes that are out there that are um, getting lunches made and helping with homework and putting band-aids on cuts and all of those phenomenal things. So to all you moms out there, uh, we would like to say happy Mother's Day. Joe, you wanna say happy Mother's Day to your mom? Yeah, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> And, and of course, a happy Mother's Day to Lee Ann. So thank you. Thank you so much. Everything <laughs> that you guys do. Um, one more question. Does the student have to use a keypad or braille display? Can they use the keyboard that pops up on their iPad? They can. Uh, okay. it, it is going to be a little slower. But, but yeah, if they're wanting to maybe test their on-screen uh, speed, definitely. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to say thank you all very much. Uh, this has been great. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it, Joe. Thanks, guys.